It's 2024, and Neuralink has just made history with its first human trial. But while everyone is going crazy about the brain-computer interface that Neuralink provides, only a few of us actually understand how it truly works. But if history tells us anything, and if what we've seen for close to a decade isn't just a facade, Elon Musk's Neuralink project could very well be the craziest thing we've ever seen in artificial intelligence. How does this thing work and what are the potential benefits and risks. Brain-computer interfaces have been around for decades, but let me take you back to 2002 when we saw the first demonstration of a monkey operating a cursor using a BCI. It was mind-blowing at the time, but fast forward to 2017 and what do we find? Neuralink, a company that was only created a year earlier, released a white paper outlining the possibility of using the technology. It looked to be a bit of a stretch at the time, but by 2019, the company showed us a pig named Gertrude with a Neuralink implant. The demo shows the possibility of capturing brain activity without wires. The following year, we see an advanced implant design and progress in monkey experiments. Everything changed in 2021, when Neuralink revealed that a pig named Pager had been living with a Neuralink for several months. They went further to demonstrate Neuralink's long-term functionality in the animal, like we can see here. And now, here we are in 2024. Neuralink has just had its first successful human trial. It almost sounds too good to be true. We now have a wireless chip implant capable of monitoring thousands of neurons at once. But how does this thing work? The science behind the brain chip is quite straightforward. The Neuralink N1 is a tiny wireless chip about the size of a quarter. The chip is surgically placed in the skull to serve as a link between the brain and the outside world. It then uses Bluetooth to send brain activity to a smartphone or other suitable device. What is crazy about this whole thing is that the chip is inserted into the brain by a surgical robot designed expressly for the task. After drilling a small hole into the cranium, the robot uses a bunch of tiny threads finer than the human hair and weaves the chip into your brain. Each thread contains high-density electrodes that can detect brain waves. The N1 chip has 1,024 electrodes distributed across 64 threads, which essentially means that there are 16 electrodes per thread, if my math is correct. With the electrodes inside the brain, we won't have to deal with any form of interference from the outside. The N1 chip is powered by a small lithium-ion battery. This battery is charged wirelessly from the outside. Now, we've all seen these things being demonstrated on the first human who goes by the name Noland Arbor. This is Nolan Arbor, the first human trial participant for Neuralink. Arbor is a 29-year-old, paralyzed from the shoulder down following a diving accident. But over the last couple of weeks, Arbor has gained some impossible telekinetic abilities. Here we see him controlling a mouse cursor to play chess with his thoughts. There are no sensors or eye tracking other than the chip in his brain. So just how is he able to do all that? So here's a 30-second crash course on on brain waves. When we sleep, our brains emit low-frequency waves called delta waves, which are around 0.5 to 4 hertz. This occurs during deep sleep. The brain then produces another type of wave called theta during light sleep, and the frequency for this one is between 4 and 8 hertz. When we wake up and become more alert, we deal with a new set of waves called alpha waves, and the frequency jumps up to around 8 to 12 hertz. But there's one more level to it. When we are hyper-focused, say when you are playing chess or doing some really complex stuff with your brain, then the brain produces gamma waves, which are more than 30 hertz in frequency. Understanding these wave patterns helps to tell the kind of thoughts going on in our brains. Although they didn't really go into detail in the Neuralink video, this is essentially how the whole thing works. Before the implant, Arbor depended on his parents for daily care and used a mouth stick to move a cursor. Now he can play his favorite strategy games, Civilization VI and chess with his mind. It goes without saying that this technology is life-changing, especially for those with disabilities.
The technology has the potential to bypass injured spinal cords and restore movement. And with Nolan Arbor loving it so far, the industry is quite optimistic. That being said, accomplishing this goal will require more research and further development because the long-term ramifications are still largely unknown. But what does Elon Musk hope to achieve? Elon Musk wants to eliminate the gap between thinking and doing with Neuralink. Imagine thinking about something and it happens right away. That's crazy and scary, I must say. Elon Musk believes that Neuralink will help people to use AI with just their thoughts, and while we are off to a great start with quadriplegics, the possibility in reality is endless. After unveiling the first implant, Musk referred to the system as telepathy in his tweet. It enables control of your phone or computer, and through them almost any device just by thinking. The initial users will be people who have lost use of their limbs. What if Stephen Hawking could communicate faster than a speed typist or auctioneer? That is the goal. Although the first trial has been successful, experts believe it will take some time to determine whether the system really works. Because the truth at the end of the day is that the success of the experiment goes beyond the immediate results. According to some experts, you can only say the trial was successful after you've observed the long-term stability of the implant. That being said, let's talk about some of the possible risks with this technology. Receiving an implant comes with its fair share of baggage. On the procedure table, it is possible to face severe bleeding. Also, the brain modeling included in BCIs could cause some epileptiform activity, which could lead to epileptic seizures. And so far, we know that Neuralink did not immediately answer Time's request for information on the implantation hazards. We also have to consider the device and technology itself. How stable are the chips in the long run? Is there a possibility that the body attempts to reject the implant? At the end of the day, it only makes sense to compare the benefits and the risks before going in for the procedure. More clinical trials are currently open for early adopters in the Neuralink Prime study, but I've got some working arms and legs, so I'll pass, please. Some social media users have also voiced their concern for some of the usage terms in the long run. Imagine Neuralink turning into a subscription based service, and then it turns off a part of your body if you do not make your monthly payments. Others have imagined that Elon Musk could decide to be running ads in people's dreams and many other crazy thoughts. What if companies use this technology to read minds or make consumers forget about a bad experience? Although I personally think this is a wonderful advancement technologically, I also understand the concerns of those who feel like it is a backstory to a dystopian novel. I'd say it's both exciting and scary at the same time, but having discussed the risks, it only makes sense to also touch on some of the potential benefits. Elon Musk has long stated that Neuralink might help people regulate their moods and hormones. Researchers believe that this breakthrough will help those with OCD or treatment-resistant depression in the near future. Right now, Neuralink doesn't go very deep into the brain. Depression treatment and deep brain stimulation target a deeper part of the brain that Neuralink might not be able to reach just yet. But not to worry, all hands are on deck to figure out how we can maximize this technology. Although it is a futuristic concept, many skeptics believe that the technology is unlikely to be widely adopted soon, simply because it was primarily designed to assist people who have suffered the greatest degree of impairment. It is not intended to feed the general public or an able-bodied person. Now to the elephant in the room. Is Neuralink here to stay, or do you think the technology's days are numbered? Truth be told, Nolan Arbor's story sounds really inspiring and encouraging, but we also know that there is a long road ahead, which is why I'll leave you with these questions. What are your opinions about Neuralink, and would you ever consider getting a brain implant? Personally, I'm excited for the future, but let me know what you think. If you loved this video, please hit that subscribe button. And and if you missed out on our last videos, don't worry, I've got you covered right here.